I'm just gonna play. I just I just gonna stop by just playing a tune, and this is an old tune that they played in New Orleans. It's the first tune uh, of jazz. It's called Buddy Bolden's Blues. I'm just gonna play a couple of chords, and I just like to play it all the time, just to remind myself and to to keep the keep the remembrance of what what it's really about in the air. So this is Buddy Bolden's Blues. Jazz, a musical art form that has spanned the past century and spread it from its origins in the United States across the globe. Enjoyed by many, jazz has evolved significantly from its starting point in the musical mecca of New Orleans. In 1955, renowned poet and Harlem Renaissance scholar Langston Hughes defined jazz in ten parts. Syncopation improvisation, percussion, rhythm, blue notes, tone color, harmony, break, riff, and joy of playing. However, before we can even think about jumping to 1955, we must look back at the circumstances in which jazz was created. New Orleans was ripe for the development of jazz with its mixing and melting of musical styles, such as ragtime, Funeral music, African, Latin, Caribbean, Mississippi blues, gospel, that's the verse of Little Boy. The little boy group, tell the gosh tongue, loving father can't believe him on. Tell him up to do no the man. Tell him time a little boy was gone on little boy. And lastly, classical music and opera. New Orleans proved to be the epicenter of creativity, musical development, and cultural synthesis. In this environment, there are many major figures that helped create and establish jazz as a musical idiom, such as Jelly Roll Morton, Buddy Bolden, Freddie Keppard, and Joe King Oliver. Jelly Roll Morton, born in New Orleans in 1890, was raised in the melting pot of music. By the age of 12, he was working as a pianist in the bordellos of Storyville. As he grew older, his reputation spread, and so did the area of his influence. He traveled around the Deep South, including places like Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and eventually made his way to Kansas City and Memphis playing minstrel shows. He made it to New York and Los Angeles by 1917. It was during this time, as he traveled between the South, New Orleans, and other cities, that he began to combine all the genres that he was playing into what we now know as jazz. Buddy Bolden, the trumpet player you see here, born in 1877, lived in New Orleans and was a well-known local musician, the first king of the cornet. To quote PBS.org, contemporary musicians universally praised the power of Bolden's tone, his rhythmic drive, and the emotional content of his slow blues playing, often contrasting his performances with those of the more genteel Creole bands 
of John Robichaud and others. Bolden apparently did not improvise melodies freely in the manner of later jazz musicians, but found ingenious ways of ornamenting existing melodies, often incorporating a distinctive lick, which functioned as a signature. Lastly, Louis Armstrong. Born in 1901 in New Orleans, Armstrong took up cornet as a young boy and developed quickly and soon took over for his famous mentor, Joe King Oliver, in the Kid Ori Band in around 1918. As his fame grew, Louis began to move up the Mississippi and eventually made his way to Chicago to play with Oliver in Oliver's Creole Jazz Band. His fame skyrocketed in his time in Chicago, and he began ensembles such as the Armstrong Hot Five and Hot Seven. To quote Biography.com, Altogether, his immensely compelling swing, his brilliant technique, his sophisticated, daring sense of harmony, his ever mobile, expressive attack, timbre, and inflections, his gift for creating vital melodies, his dramatic, often complex sense of solo design, and his outsized musical energy and genius made these recordings major innovations in jazz.